There it is, right there. He used it to activate the invisibility towers and shoot. Oh, he shot the warden with it. <laughs> Today is our Cosmo League upper bracket semifinals. The long awaited match between Navi and Vitae is underway. Let's kick into it, guys. It's going to be Picastro kicking us off today. Now, what's interesting is Picastro had a flawless run, 100% hit rate all the way through their World Championship qualifier playthrough. So, 30 wars in a row with no misses. And I assume he's been using this attack a lot because every time I've seen. Him play recently. This is the one he's been breaking out here. But look at this. He attacks both sides of the base at the same time. Big stack of root riders across the top of the base there with the Valkyries. More root riders over the left flank there. Siege Brooks over the right flank. King at the very bottom. Attacking every different side of the base simultaneously. But the only area that he's not going to right now is the town hall. Look at the town hall. Like, being weird. <laughs> it's being weird. It's under overgrowth right now, but it was also under freeze for a minute. And so now it's... Now that's a weird... That's, that looks weird. But it's still under overgrowth. It's, okay, now it's waking back up. Now that everybody has wrapped all the way around from the left and right and bottom and will now all converge and go back to it. But he's got a road champion ability. He's got just over a minute elapsed on the clock there. One more freeze onto it. Locked out again. Gets the Inferno down. Everybody steps in and quickly and easily overwhelm it as he steps his way through with the first triple for Navi. And it looked like, uh, I think it was one minute and 12 seconds. Very, very solid attack time. Picastro delivers as usual. Apparently, Picastro used a giant arrow at some point here, and we missed it. He used giant arrow with the frozen arrow at the very bottom here, and then popped it into the middle. I, I have to assume. He used it right there. Okay, I don't know where he used it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where he used it. Apparently, he used a giant arrow there somewhere. I didn't see it fly. However, Dreamwalker in for Vitae now. Electro Dragon. Stack him up. Make sure they all get hit, and it looks like he also was using the the no invisibility vial. He's using the archer pup, or the, the healer puppet, and the frozen arrow to make sure he can get the flank support right away there, get the damage reduction from the frozen arrow, but make sure he gets the healer spawn immediately and gets more electro dragons to go to the core of the base there. One of them splits off and gets the talent down. The other ones go in and get the CC and get the monolith out of the way here. Big packs still moving through, and he should get a couple good more chains. You get one more into that Inferno. Doesn't doesn't get it down. Does get the shot off, though. Leave it up to go back for it. Cost a little bit of time. But the World Champion's cut across the core of the base right now. But he needs to get the defensive Queen under control here. If the Queen goes down, he's in a pretty good spot. There's a Poison on her. He needs to go uh, put a Freeze onto that Ricochet can. Otherwise, he's going to lose a Spirit Fox. Ends up losing it, but he does get it invisible. No, we, uh, no, I take it back. The Spirit Fox is still alive, but then dies to a giant bomb. But he's still got some of the E-Drags alive here. He's going to come right up and approach the time that we saw out of Picastro. But it is going to be a slight time advantage into Navi's favor. Very, very small split. Looks like it is a, a three-second split for the official times. Let's see this giant arrow back in slow motion. There it is, right there. He used it to activate the invisibility towers and shoot... Oh, he shot the warden with it. <laughs> But he got the invisibility towers triggered. And that made so that the main force could go there, but that he was overgrowth in it anyways. I guess that's why the invisibility bugged out the graphics for the overgrowth. Now, the question I guess you got to ask is, does the invisibility towers stop their reset timer while they're under overgrowth? So now with that three second split, let's pass it over to Gaku. Let's see what we can do with the Reviders and Valkyries once again. You gotta keep the time as minimal as possible. Let's see, he deploys Decay the Queen together with the Golem. Wall break them into the base there. Instead of using a uh, Root Rider, because you think about it, a Root Rider is 20 troop space, the Wall Breaker is eight. Like, you might as well at some point <laughs> just like sacrifice all Wall Breakers and just bring more root riders. But that's not the way that he's thinking here. He just wanted to get the wall open so the king can step in. He's running the king and the queen separately then the root riders are moving but the world champion will join at the very bottom of the base and will work on the left flank of the root riders as he makes his way forward with the king getting a jump towards the town hall. It just... I... <laughs> I would not have expected with a majority root rider attack that he'd be using wall breakers and jumps to run the flank. But that's what he's doing here. But he may not get the Town Hall down. The King is going to fall short. Town Hall stays standing. He's going to have to go back for it. Town Hall's doing a lot of damage in the meantime. He's doing a lot of work against these Room Riders here. Taking giant bombs. Taking Scattershot fire. The P.E.K.K.A. A P.E.K.K.A. comes out of nowhere. Must have come off of the Siege Barracks. Enabled to get the strikes to get the Town Hall down. 
But now down south here, the world champion pops her hog puppet, makes her way forward there. We'll get the bottom of the base there cleared out, doing some good work there with all the tanky provided. And it is going to be a triple once again for Navi. So Gaku's official time was 1 minute and 19 seconds. And that means that the time split between the teams right now is 1 to 2 seconds total. I'm not sure exactly. I guess I can look at the boards here. And I'm counting if this one goes through. I don't know. I'm trying to count really calculations in my head. I know that it's around one or two seconds, though. So let's just keep that in mind there. The mark I think that I need to get to is a minute and 15 seconds of this one as we see the riders once again. We see the overgrowth locking out the town hall and the eagle artillery. He's going to wrap around it here. He's going to wrap around potentially both sides, ideally both sides, and go to the queen and the world champion. But he loses the Siege Barracks troops over to the far left side of the base. Or at least one of the Pekas goes down. And he does have... Looks like Hogs came out of his... Out of his Siege Barracks over the left side there. And then kind of got wrecked as they passed up the pack. No Root Riders were really pathing into the Inferno compartments. They all went directly center to the Scatter Shots. But they're going to go back to the core now. The question is, does he have a good enough wave here to get through this area without any trouble? Because it does feel like it's slowing down a bit here. Felt like it was slowing down... The moment that he was having to break walls manually to get into those Inferno compartments and get through there. He lost a couple troops there in the process, but he's kind of struggling the back side of the base here as well. Gets the Road Champion Popper, Hog Puppet, and the Haze File. That'll get the Hogs to move forward. They've got the Ricochet Can down. The King is taking the other one, but he needs to get past the Defensive King right now. He does get through it. Steps his way forward there. Haze File doing work. Got the defenses down. And in a clean up we go, but time has already elapsed further than the time that they need to take the lead so it is going to stay advantage navi here as he tries to crawl this one through the queen breaking the wall here but i think the rc will get through first but i think the queen can reach it from right there when she gets through just kidding she cannot she'll find more walls to attack rc will finish the job and clock it in at a minute and 49 seconds very slow attack when things slow down a bit but that's the way it can play out very very often with the smallest kind of hiccup Next up is SARS. We're going to see a little bit of a change of pace here. Or maybe just the same pace. Maybe still equally as fast, but with Lalo instead. He's going to make his way in to the left side with the King of the Queen. Get the wall break to get the King in to get the defensive world champion and the scatter shot out of the way. But the Lalo goes into the right with the Lightning using the very top compartment. So King got one of those side compartments next to the town hall and then the lightning got the other but he will blip out that town hall it means no resistance on his path in and it will secure the town hall takedown but also probably gonna pick up that inferno yes it does and on top of that the king is in a very good position right now to tank the monolith under the phoenix right there so he'll hold his attention for a bit he's got the hog puppet right there as well and he is attacking the very bottom of the base there at the same time he's not just doing one phase of the attack there at the same at the time he's doing every single part of the attack there simultaneously but he needs to get the world champion to get the assistance on the back side as the balloons are starting to wear kind of thin passing the woman mark right now a lot of the base has been removed but with the single inferno still standing and the expo the world champion 100 is not safe right now she can potentially finish it here but if she doesn't this is gonna cost him a ton of time to get the water right there there we go she goes invisible one more time and she will step her way through spirit fox gives her the protection that she needs warden almost survives but he goes down the same time the last building does and he's another triple four stars back over to vatang more Ru riders more valkyries and you have to understand that this is the way that they have to play it until they see somebody make a mistake because they have to not only get these triples consistently but they have to do it as fast as possible and this attack has been proven to be the best of both worlds in that case this one and zap lalo are the two fastest attacks in the game right now which is why we see so much of it we go right through the town hall he can overgrowth then luck out the artillery and both of the infernos there but he's going to go ahead and jump over to the right it's kind of an interesting place for a jump there. Does it get anybody to actually go over to it? The king's over there. The king of the golem over there. The king will pop his ability and surge his way forward. Get the defensive world champion down. King of the giant goblet doing some good work up there. And the jump gives him the access even ahead of the root riders. So he takes the lead instead of standing behind them. Which works out perfect because he's got a lot of damage reduction right now from his giant gauntlet. But the queen. What is this? What is... Why, why are so many of these players running... The Healer Puppet and the Frozen Arrow, or the Giant Arrow and the Frozen Arrow. What is happening? Nobody's breaking out the Invisibility Vial? Is this a shift in the meta? It might be. 
Maybe. I, I guess we'll have to see how it continues to play out here if we see more people following this trend. But I guess if the queen stays safe the whole time, she'll spawn the healers right there. She doesn't really end up under any threat at any time. And he does get it done. And this one locks in at a minute and 20, there's me, 32 seconds. Let's check the average attack time here. Let's see where we sit between the teams. It is advantage, Navi, and that advantage seems to be growing right now, but it's still within reach of a tank. More overgrowth, more root riders, more Valkyries. I'm telling you guys, this attack is strong. I I've been trying it myself there, and I can't get it to work the same way that these guys can, but let's see what kind of queen equipment we got here. It is going to be back to Frozen Arrow and the Invisible Divine. Like, I still think that is... One of the strongest equipment sets of the game. That or the healer pump. It depends on what you got leveled up there. But I, I suppose that there are other options now. That these guys are trying to break out. And having some good success with it. But King gets that super dragon drawn out there. The queen will get the lock on and freeze up there. Stop his damage output. And the king will just continue to provide tanking over there for her. But interesting once again that we're seeing the king the queen being run on the flank of the root riders not being piled in with them they run on the flank there they get wall breaks remember we had a wall break here and wall break here to get the king through and get the queen through and the root riders will then move it to the left side of the base there overgrowth the town hall and then walk away from it so to go back from and they're going a little bit far from that town hall but they're turning around now as the defenses are waking back up and they'll make their way into it and swarm it just take everything out of the base there and then swarm it i have to wonder like if we ever got if we if we get some kind of like a defensive buff in the future and the meta shifts back then they can't play it like the way that they are the reason they're able to do the overgrowth of the way that they are is because they're able to get the rest of the base down and immediately be in position to turn back onto the overgrowth area and then quickly get through it as well. So Kazuma gets it done. Navi keeps their time in a very favorable position. And these overgrowth attacks are just completely shredding bases when paired with the Riders. So we've talked about this a few times on the channel now. But we know the Supercell is deliberately making the game much easier right now whether that is a long-term test whether the test is almost over whether the test is just for town hall 16 it'll change to 17 or whether they change it as we continue to make our way towards our next world championship circuits i really think that overall they do need to do something i i think that the game overall is easy and i think that's good for the casual player and it's good for the average player who plays clash of clans and i don't see a problem with that however on the esports side of things we're seeing rule riders Valkyries and Super Barbarians and we're seeing it basically every single attack of this entire war and there we go Once again, we're seeing the Hila Puppet and the Frozen Arrow there So definitely seeing something a little bit new in this war here, but overall it is effectively the same attack over and over done in a very similar fashion now He doesn't get the overgrowth to come to the town hall here and that's gonna be hopefully under control there as he got a couple of troops to go that direction but he'll rage up that area there make sure that he gets that town hall down but we're wrapping around the overgrowth there and they will get through that now back to what i was talking about i've talked about it and i've advocated i've advocate, uh, advocated for it a lot and that is that i think that the game can be good for the casuals on the lower leagues and like farm play and like regular wars and stuff like that i think that's perfectly fine but I strongly believe that when we go into high levels of Clan War League, High Leagues, into Legend League, and into tournament play, so like maybe put a, a, a hard mode basically for a friendly war, then we can make so that people could choose a higher challenge when they want it, and then the people who don't want that can avoid it very easily. And then they can play against other people that are also avoiding it. And I think a natural difficulty setting for the game would actually benefit it a lot but it's another triple here we're tied again and the time is currently 14 seconds in the favor of navi klaus breaking out the healer puppet and the invisibility vial going with the root riders going with the spam going with the overgrowth early ward ability gives the protection that he needs for the turtle tome as long as he doesn't make any major mistakes here, he should be okay. But he's got a little bit of a mistake there going on right now with the king almost veering off. But he goes back on track there. Getting the siege bricks and the king to go in through the wall break. And jump to get him through the base there. And the root riders once again attack on a different area. The queen over to the far left there. Siege bricks giving the king the support that he needs. And if he can get that multi down, then he protects all the 
with all the wizards that are right next to him, but he'll rage in that area where champion steps through as well. He's got hogs out of the siege barracks, and he will avoid the town hall for now. But the queen is right there in position to be able to tag it as soon as it comes out of that. She's stuck on ice golems. There we go. It's waking up now. Monarch is going to start firing away here. Warden is in a little bit of a vulnerable position, but a couple other troops there barely step out in front of him, and he does get through that. The Queen pops her ability there. Town Hall gets frozen up, and he's got one more freeze on standby. Passing the woman to mark right now, where Champion pops that haste file over to the right there. Gets the hog puppet. Surges through the last couple of defenses, and the Prentice Warden gives up onto that. Okay, let me get that. I'm going to get that. He's got it. He's in a swarm out, obviously. He's going to get through the last couple of buildings here, but I'm looking at the, the attack time here, and he locks it in at a minute and 20 seconds for Navi once again. I do think that it is mathematically over here. I don't think that it is possible that Lancelot could swing the war back. But let's see how fast he can go. Let's see what we can do. As he will throw all caution to the wind and just send it. But then I feel like that's what they do on every single one of these a lot of times. They have a strategy that is going to work consistently. Where they don't have to think about it too much there. They just got to think about the initial path. Then he'll put the siege breaks over to the right. He'll put the root riders right through the town hall. Sacking up the heroes to go right with the root riders. And that's about as simple as you can make this attack here. Where right the frozen arrow? The invisibility vial. Running right the healing tome to make sure that you can get through the town hall. Without having to worry about the poison. And that's not going to be a problem. He'll get through that quickly. But the warden is veering off to the right. Lots of root riders going off to the left a little bit there. So to redirect now as the queen is able to get the outside of the base there under control. But she's taking a lot of damage right now. Queen's going to go to ability right there. And I guess she'll pass the defense over. Seems okay right now. To get through this monolith though. Lots of losses in the middle of the base right there. Monolith. Ah, oh, wow. Um. Is. <laughs> Well, this is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Is this a miss? Where was this miss earlier in the war, right? I mean, I guess they were able to keep it close to the end. But I'm not 100% sure that he's got this right now. Roar Champion moving to the right. Double Ricochet Cannon still stands. Multi Infernos, Eagle Artillery. Lost to Queen. Champion has to do all the heavy lifting here, but she's already burning up and she's going down very soon here to the Ricochet Cannon. And there's just too much damage here. And... <laughs> I guess it's not just a freebie. I guess it's not just a freebie. But ladies and gentlemen, it looks like it is going to be a win for Navi, no matter what. Even if this one was able to beat them on time somehow, which I don't think it was. Well, as it stands, we are going to see Navi moving on to the upper bracket finals of the Cosmo League. Their next opponent is going to be whoever survives between the yet-to-be-played Millisim MG and Synchronic Man. So, very, very big teams left in the competition. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and we'll see you in the next one.